I can't think about stuff like okay. that when I'm singing, so maybe I should like stand here. Okay, yeah, that's probably good.
building models of the world that we might want to live in. And sorting feelings in our stomach, liberation from starvation. But have we made it anywhere at all if the dishes are never done? the dishes after the revolution well we do our own dishes now we'll do our own dishes then and it's always the one to talk who asks that fucking question Collect 
collecting garbage to prove we don't need governance to do these things. And I'll wake up burning Times Square as we sing. Throw your hands in the air, property is robbery. called Proudhon in Manhattan, Rev. <coughs> and it's at the beginning of Burn the Earth, Leave It Behind. <coughs> uh. Anyway. Uh. <coughs> I just got a little exercising done. I'm wet. I'm <laughs> like wet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I hate saxophones. I fucking hate saxophones. I hate saxophones. I hate saxophones. <sighs> um. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I have always hated saxophones. I continue to hate saxophones. I fucking... <laughs> of course you are, Aspen. Um, I, <laughs> I hate saxophones. It's not all brass instruments like it is, um, what's his name? Uh, fucking Rev. <laughs> Rev hates all brass instruments. I don't hate all brass instrument, instruments. I like trumpets. I like trombones. I like, um, um, oh God, uh, French horns. I like, you know, I, I don't have a problem with brass. I hate saxophones. I hate saxophones. I hate saxophones. I hate saxophone players. I hate saxophone, how saxophones are constantly interjected into things. I hate, I hate the style in which saxophones are generally played. I fucking hate saxophones. <laughs> oh, whatever. Oh my God, you wanna know why? <clears throat> uh, for Tus, would you like to know why saxophones aren't brass instruments? Because blast, brass players didn't want them to be. I'm not kidding you. There was a symposium of brass players many, many years ago. And they decided whether they would admit the saxophone into brass instrumentum or not. They literally decided not to. That's the only reason is because a bunch of brass players went, no, we don't want that amongst us. That's hilarious. Because you're not sax positive. No, I hate them. I despise them. Yeah, even the brass instrument players so, saw the fucking saxophone rock up and go. What now, Cassie? No, 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 Fertus. It, it was an arbitrary decision made by committee. Yeah, like the same reason that Fucking tomatoes are a vegetable. An arbitrary ma decision made by committee. That's it. 
that's the real reason why saxophones are actually classified as woodwind and not brass. Jim's Philly cheesesteak burnt down today? Oh, I'll be damned. What happened? I don't see any news about it. Oh, never mind. Got it. Saxophones are the tomatoes of wind instruments. Who knew? See, that, Fertus, is the description I can get behind. 100%, 100% of the time. Saxophones are the tomatoes of wind instruments. Who knew? Except I like tomatoes. Tomatoes are wonderful. Tomatoes can play sweet and savory. They can play cooked and raw. Saxophones, on the other hand, are a garbage instrument that, de uh, that deserves to be uh, relegated to the annals of history. Um... Seriously, though, I'm glad I'm not the only one who cringes at sax music. It's like nails on chalkboard. Yeah, I fucking hate them. I hate saxophones. This is this is a goddamn shame, though, here. I mean, I'm not I, I'm not into the rivalry. I just like a good uh, Philly cheese. As long as you're willing to put, like, whiz on it for me and make it a garbage sandwich, I'm okay with it. Um, but, like... Yeah, I'm not into, the, like, the Jims versus Geno's versus fucking... You know, I'm not into that shit. But, like, you know, it's an institution. That place is a guy. It's been there. It's been there for a minute. Oh, so what happened? <clears throat> oh. It, it looks like it was probably something to do with, like, a condenser or a cooler um, in the freezer area. When they came in, it was 80 degrees and it should have been cold. An air conditioning contractor was called and the dude went on about setting up for the business for the day. Um, and then about 10 o'clock, they found the issue in a freezer area. We looked up and we saw smoke coming down from where the walk-in was. It was just smoke pouring out. It moved through the heating, uh, ventilation and air conditioning system uh, as they fought the fire. Interesting. Philly's got good firefighters. I, 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 Philly's one of those towns that has like, you know, when the firefighters speak, shut up and listen. Like, this is, I, I, you know, they got problems. They all, get, you know, any large organization does, but. Uh, Sax is the wood piece. Why isn't flute brass is the real question. <laughs> uh, um. But seriously, what about the sax and the best of Marcel Marceau album? Ugh, I mean, we could give it a try. We could give it a try. Look, Rev, I'll, I'll fucking, I'll give it a try. But I will tell you, there's shit that even I, like, I'm sorry. No, I despise this instrument. I really, really do. Oh, God. Is this... This is that silent album. This is that silent album. Six seconds in, I realized. I'm like, wait, the best of Marcel Marceau is the fucking silent al album. Six seconds is what it took. It's like, wait. I'm like, I could hear the vinyl play. I was like, yeah, wait, that's that album. Yeah. Yeah, it's two sides of vinyl of just uh, recorded silence. It's really interesting. It's sold too. Good on him. Uh, no, I hate sax. I, I, I legitimately hate the saxophone. Um, oh God, nonsense. Um, hey, Dig. <clears throat> Okay, so. <clears throat> it looks like Russia bombed like a good chunk of land 
<clears throat> including an area that held POWs because with heavy artillery shelling, you can cover up a lot of war crimes. After they got called out hard, and that dude's that dude's fucking wanted, by the way. He's on he's on a li- somebody's list. He's on somebody's list. The, um, if you don't know what I'm referring to, Russia got caught out hard. Um, one of their Biryat, one of their ethnic minority soldiers, easily identifiable, is a Biryat soldier. Um, <clears throat> um, was filmed uh, beating a prisoner of war using a box cutter to strip their clothing off of them, and then very roughly um, castrate, to shred this dude's, and fully, he went after it. He used a fucking bag and some, like, uh, 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 like some cloth to, like, grab at the end of it, to, like, make sure he fucking fully, and then shoved it in the dude's mouth, put a bullet in his brain, and then they tied him to a truck and drug him down the street. Um, the soldier's tattoos were noted in the video. Um, well, cat, like, yeah. And the dude who did it and the video went up, he's identifiable. He's, he's already, the geolocation of the incident was noted in the videography. Uh, the fucking tattoos on the, the man on camera have been noted. He's an ethnic minority a Russian soldier already. Um, they added him to the list and, um, yeah, it, it's straight up. No, like when I say they added him to the list, one of the military groups that has a Twitter account over in Ukraine cat straight up said noted, like they, they called it out. They're like, we got it. Like they, they thanked the public for the like the uh, um, the uh, open source intelligence work that they did because but they put this went out and then the internet reacted did a whole bunch of work and said this is what we have and one of the military groups over in Ukraine said cool thanks you know it's like oh yeah he's fucking done skis. So Ukraine is now weaponi- weaponizing autism. Uh, it looks like it, Caboose. Yes, it looks like it. It looks like Ukraine is officially rocking some weaponized internet autism. <laughs> They're using the hive mind, which, I mean, why wouldn't you? Yeah, free outsourcing. Dude, there's, there's already reports. Um, there's investigations of like 21,000 reports of war crimes. Like it, it, it's the, the numbers they're putting up are fucking impressive. Uh, it really, really is. Um, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, Russia just bombed an entire area where uh, they, they already controlled and they were holding POWs, which there's another war crime. Right. Um, but yeah. Yeah. They, 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 they bombed an entire area they already controlled. And it's like, whatever you, what evidence are you trying to destroy? Like, you can't, you can't, you can't hide a war crime from an American. Son. Son. Come on. Do you think we, dude, come on. And, and we were founded by Britain, right? We got the fucking European in us. Like, you can't, like, you can't slip this by us. We've been, we've been involved in so many of these moments nationally at this point that it's like, dude, you can smell one of these a mile away. The desperation of an imperial cover-up. Just carpet bomb it. That's what they did. They carpet bombed an entire area. They artillery shelled it. An entire area they already controlled. Um, killed POWs and shit in the process. Yeah. This is, this is just, this is good on you. Good on you, you fucking Imperial Cox. Holy shit, man. <clears throat> Gas our own citizen and play dumb. Yeah. It's fucking. <clears throat> 
Oh, that's not surprising at all for two. So I didn't know that, but that's not surprising. I don't think we're the king of it, actually, Puka. We, we brought our own panache to it, right? We're the ones that said we can really turn a profit doing this. Like, I know you set up like cute little quaint empires and shit like that. Bel I'm looking at the king of Belgium, by the way, for this Puka. Right, I'm looking at the king of Belgium, right? Go Leopold two up in that bitch. Um, like, I get it. Like, no, no, no. I, I don't think the US is the king of war crimes. I think we just brought our own panache to it. We're, we're, we're the McDonald's of war crimes. Right. I think that that's where we can put up numbers, but I don't think the numbers necessarily convey the like the 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 terribleness. I think that's an aspect of terribleness that needs to be talked about. But I think that like some of the really fucked up like shit that some of those European nations got up to down in Africa. I think that's it's worth talking about at least. Like, if we're going to talk about the grand scheme and scale of how fucked up some shit has gone down in the, in the history of humanity as far as imperial and colonial conquest and expansionism, you know, within the chauvinistic processes of patriarchal societies especially, you know, that, that sort of thing, there's some, there's some people that have done some really fucked up shit. And I think it's worth noting, like, the shit that Genghis Khan got up to stacking bodies outside cities, like, you know, piles. It, 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 when you're, you're hearing, like, pile, like a laundry pile, I mean tens of thousands of bodies stacked, just piled outside of dogs, cats, men, women, children, just piles of bodies like the the what you know some of the 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 islamic conquerors some of those <clears throat> islamic expansionist conquests that they did dude they got up to some fucked up shit would you say muslims are the least ones who done it no no boom literally just see my previous statement no 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 humanity has gotten up to some insanely fucked up shit um, and so like, yeah, America brings like McDonald's level ruthless efficiency and like coldness to it. Like we don't even have to like our war crimes these days. We don't even have to put men on the ground to commit them. It's ridiculous. <clears throat> we've, we've mechanized it and we've, we've, we've sort of, we've stripped it of the, the human element of war crimes. Right. Like occasionally, like you get a fucking, you know, a Navy SEAL who fucking pop, uh, you know, pops a fucking kid and a woman in the street and his entire fucking team try and get him drummed out for it but then you know upper echelon covers it up and the government the fucking president ends up giving him a goddamn pardon anyway so i mean that's that's like the sc scope and scale of our war crimes these days like it's like you know we'll bomb a, a you know a random afghani village or like a, you know a, a school like a class out on a fucking field trip in a bus like that's 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 what we do it's very cold it's very mechanized it's very it's it's it's, it's in a distance even with like the seals right it's with a rifle down a scope right um yeah, some of those old timey war crimes, like what we would consider like, you know, crimes against humanity and shit. Dude, they got up to some craziness. They got to some, some craziness. What's up, AJ? Ah, uh, scale, not creativity. Yeah. Automated atrocities, so no one is, nobody is responsible. Yeah. Imperial Russia enters the chat. Unicorn, what's up, Unicorn Dragon? Hope you're as well as you can be, at least. Puka, that's insane, but true. Humans do seriously fucked up shit to each other as long as we could. <laughs> yeah, fuck Eddie. Uh, Pope just came to Canada to say whoops for assimilation. <laughs> <laughs> We've got our crimes to answer for now too. Oh yeah, no, I th I think that like yeah, I can't. I in good conscience, even like as an anarchist, in good conscience, I can't suggest that America is the worst perpetrator of like inhumane atrocities on this planet. I think we McDonaldsified it. I think we automated it and put it at a distance and like very very like turned it into a clinical practice. It's very, you know, yeah, it's just rote. Um, there are some truly like fucked up shit that like, I mean, dude, that brazen bullshit. I mean, it, we, we, we all get taught this sort of stuff, but do you understand that like 
at one time it was seen okay in society to toss a motherfucker in a giant like metal bowl and just build a bonfire under it and like just cook them alive until like it whistles out and shit like the the the, the weird shit that we have gotten up to in human history like you know yeah the the, the heads on pikes thing the drawn and quartering thing the fuck it like you mean you attached ropes to horses to each of the extremities of a human being and then sent them off galloping in opposite directions as a form of punishment mm -hmm. how often was this done oh all the time oh interesting that's fascinating Right, like this is this is the, the conversations that we have to get into if we start talking about the, the that sort of like oh shit. So people got up to some fucked up stuff. Like I said, Belgium and Leopold is at the top of my list. Puka, I mean for real, yeah. Depends on your definition of we. Unicorn humans is our definition of we. Humans, humans. There has never been a participant of the human species that has not been of a, uh, a uh, has not been a subgroup participant of some fucked up shit. They themselves may not have been, but the greater classifications of humans around them probably participated in some violent behavior and exemplified some very interesting practices towards one another along the way or had them practiced against them. There's no ethical form of existence under humanity, says nonsense, and I, I agree with that. I agree. You can't, you can't, you're a human. Welcome to the shit show. You're a human on earth. Russian war crimes? What about Ukrainian war crimes? Well, I didn't just watch a fucking Ukra uh, um, Ukrainian literally chop a dude's balls off on fucking camera for shits and giggles. Put a uh, put his ball in his mouth and fucking pop a rifle uh, around through his skull and then drag him down the fucking road, and then have Russia artillery shell an entire area of land that they already controlled that already had P uh, fucking dozens and dozens of POWs in it that they summarily executed in that artillery showing because they didn't evac them either in their attempt to cover up further evidence of war crimes all on camera all with high definition evidence attached to it oh this is gonna be some fucked up shit yeah yeah i i, I mean, fucking oh bangladesh yes so the Muslim on Muslim violence redirects to, to the, holy shit, uh, the Bangladeshi genocide. Yeah, fucking th killed between 300,000 and, 300, and 3 million, because we don't know. Um, raped between 200,000 and 400,000 Bengali women. Um, about 3 million people. Yeah. Largest genocide since World War II. Yeah. Uh, last I checked, Ukrainians were digging mass graves in preparation of future crimes against humanity. Yeah. I mean, even still, that's some fucked up shit. Informaticus. I mean, the tales of those. The, mm, I I I don't need to like participate too much in a in a system. It's like, you know, that's oof. Man who do this in Ukrainian uniform. Well, we know they're not a native English speaker. They're not from America. You can this. Aka, it's it's not even a simp, honestly. This is, this is, this is where you start to actually, this is where you go. Could be an op. Could be an op. For real. That's that sort of like, the dead, the dead giveaway for me was, and by the way, on, 
on this videos man who do this in ukrainian uniform has all the hallmarks of somebody from that part of the world that aren't learned english as a second language missing participles this sort of thing yeah um oh oh uh, any of the slavic stuff yeah dude the <laughs> any of the slavic stuff uh, uh i'm sorry not slavic uh baltic yeah The wars in between Russia and Chechnya were brutal. Um, Bosnian genocide alone. Uh, man, <laughs> man, who do this? Really, just the Balkans? Because this, yeah, like yeah, you mean the Balkans? But that that goes for every like like the Balkans have been. Don't get me wrong. Recently, they've you know definitely been. Like, let me say recently, human history recently. Right? Recently, they've been kicking off. But I mean, really, is there a stretch of land, cat? They're like, I mean, Antarctica or some shit like that. But like, is there a stretch of land that humans have occupied where you're not like, and that's where that fucked up shit happened? That's the history of humanity, right? History is just learning a series of fucked up things that happened. You're like, here's here's all the fucked up stuff that happened this year and here's all the fucked up stuff that happened last the next year and here's all the fucked up stuff that happened because of the stuff that happened the previous year and you know yeah like that's just human history like every stretch of land we've occupied you're like and here's where that fucked up stuff happened just it's yeah the rwandan genocide i there's no like you know God, God willing, the Russian government will pay for their crimes against Ukraine, Georgia, and the Russian people. Uh, <clears throat> Russian sources to prove that the Russian state isn't being bad at the moment. Sounds legit. I think the Kazakhs were always ethical warriors, though. I could be wrong. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Evan, I'll just tell you. My gut, my gut immediately is like, were they human? Mm, we try we try some of us do better than others but i uh, you know there are no saints we are but sinners oh. ah, let's unplug that cool <laughs> by the way by the way i just want to i just want to i love I, Evan, what do you mean were? Your, your three days of hunger and a vulnerable neighbor away from going on your own conquest too. Trust me. There's no were. <laughs> we are all very capable. We just need the right um, pressure supply. That's all. Uh, just, just gotta push the right buttons. Shit gets real, real fast. Um, I, I point out the toilet paper in America during COVID. Right? Full spectrum. Full spectrum. Up to and including the people that are like, I'm gonna take advantage of this situation. Right? Full spectrum of humanity. Right there. That you're just like, Jesus Christ, we are dumb, panicky animals. Yep. That's it. You push the right buttons, shit gets real. Yeah. No, Evan, you just handle business. That's just, it's just sometimes, you know, that's the way it works. Coming to my house, I have to handle business. It's just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, Rev. I, I think we all do, Rev. It's just the it's just a matter of finding the right pressures that need to be applied. Uh, oh, that was wild. Just ripping resources from the needy, reselling diapers. Dude, AJ. There it is. On display. I I, I think that that's just that's just the way it is. Um and, you know, oh, cool.
cool. I love it when people do this shit. There it is. I didn't even have to do anything. Akka handled that. Every anarchist knows there's no ethical consumption under capitalism. There isn't. The entirety of the system is tainted. That's our point, woolly mammoth. That's the entire point. Oh, no, I go to great lengths to actually ensure um, the entirety of my consumable diet is highly ethical, up to and including sourcing individual products from individual growers and suppliers. Um, I apply more effort into my day-to-day -day consumption portion of my life. I'll have this shirt for years and years and years and years. It's just the way it is. I have clothes still from high school. Um, I don't outgrow them, so I can just continue to wear them. Um, so I take care of the stuff that was, yeah, very much so unethically produced. Even with fair trade uh, products, you can never be sure. A good portion of my, um, so some of my products, like, you know, these socks and strings, things like that, um, packs, shoes, those sorts of things, my mattress, those are all um, first world sourced, ethically sourced, organically grown, sort of uh, created products that have uh, union backing or uh, worker cooperative stuff behind it. Um, the electronics, there's really no way around that. Um, see, this is a thing, Woolly Mammoth. Um, I actually put work into trying to provide some ethical, um, trying to apply my ethical framework to my consumption habits within the an unethical system, such as capitalism. You just throw shit, like, you know, as you, you that's all you're after. See, I, I actually try a little bit to improve the world a little bit, you know, a little bit, um, and try and do that. I'm, you know, in this community, um, is well known. Um, yeah, my consumption habits are very well processed. I have a guy for rather than go through big industry or industrial production, you know, individual growers, I put a lot of work into it. I put a lot of fucking work into like trying to set up as many ethical supply lines as I can to myself. You probably put no work into it. Or at most you rely on a large store to just like, you know, Whole Foods it or something along those lines. Um, so, yeah. You can criticize, but I mean, the fact of the matter is, is I'm aware of the unethical nature of capitalism. That's just the nature of the system. And I'm aware of where and how I can optimize and how things like that stand. Yeah. Like I said, I'm good with my clothes too. And I don't participate in fast fashion. Uh, I don't, you know, it's it just what I have is what I have usually. I don't buy a whole lot of new clothes and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So. I take what I want. I'm ruthless and understand this world. You are half-assing the world. Mm, that's adorable. Come on air. Woolly mammoth. Come on air. Come on. Where's the... Uh... Beta! Come show me how it's done. Please. Come, come edify me. Oh, well then go away. Cause I'm tired of you. You're not here in good faith. You're not here to interact in any meaningful manner. You're here to throw shit. Oh, twi and Twitch is. Oh, well then goodbye. Uh, for those that didn't see it, uh, Wooly Mama said, why would I want good faith with you? So, Wooly Mammoth, I only interact with people in good faith. Bye-bye. Uh, you see how you alphaed your way into your freeze peach right there? 
he's already gone. They usually rage quit. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Who was that? Ugh, fucking, you know. Um, but a great stream name. Thank you. I love frozen peaches. I like, I, peaches are one of the only fruits I, I really like tinned. Um, peaches and pineapple. I'm fine with the, the tinned version. Um, yeah, canned, canned peaches and canned pineapples, I think are just fine. Uh, every other fruit, I hate a canned version of it. Hate it. Um, yeah, AJ, it does. If only, I wish I was on the Rook Prime One's payroll. If only the ruble was worth anything. Uh, I, I don't know what the Peaches song is, Karina. Um, I actually agree. Those fruits are good canned. Yeah, no, those. I think those are the only two good fruits that are canned. Um, uh, any uh, the only two canned fruits that are good canned. Um, yeah, canned peaches go hard. Like, yeah, I I think I think canned peaches and canned pineapple are the only two fruits that survive the canning process. Every other fruit does not survive the canning process. It is it's it does not hold up through it. The peaches and the pineapple seem to hold up through it. Oh, f uh, since when Russia uh, first invaded sovereign territory in an attempt to gain access once again to the resources of the region, up to and including ports. That, 2014. Uh, Aspen, hell yeah, I bought a lamb. Uh, Aspen, for what purposes have we purchased said lamb? And congratulations on said purchase. Uh, guava holds up as well also. I don't think I've ever had canned guava, Cass. To slaughter. Cool. I, 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 I wasn't sure, but I figured. I thought I'd ask. Yeah. Congratulations. The whataboutism from Russians is always annoying, and I'm Russian myself. It's... It, you know, it's better being an anarchist just because you criticize everybody. Like, I, I don't believe in nation states. They're dumb. It's a dumb idea. So, like, it's just, it's like, yeah, if like, you're a, a white American who's criticizing China or Russia, I shit on this country, too. I shit on all countries. The idea of a country is stupid. Nationalism is dumb. Like, it, it, it's so, like, I'm an equal opportunity offender at the end of the day. So, like, I have an inbuilt defense. You know? It's like, eh. I got plenty of material on record shitting all over this fucking country so like you know come on yeah it's 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 just a it's a stupid idea my example is always i can take a i can take a picture of my dick and send it to some random hotmail address and some dude in india 128 milliseconds later is gonna have i get a fucking picture of my cock in his face and be like ah the fuck you know, right? Like it's it's like that. We live in a world that's way too small for this concept at this point. It's a stupid idea. It's a stupid idea. Like it, it just is. So, you know, it was a stupid idea without the internet, and now it's a really, really, really dumb idea. Yeah, it's 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 a time. It's it's that that time is gone. Like we created a technology that turned this globe into an instant. You can transit it in a moment. You can be live streaming halfway across the world in a half a second. You know, it, it's entirely too small at this point for the concept and idea of a nation state. It, it's it's a stupid subdivisional unit that has outgrown, that we've outgrown, uh, technologically speaking. Uh, the nation state as a technology is outmoded and needs to be removed from the production cycle. Yeah, as a technologist, I just... It's just how I approach it. Um, 
yeah, becoming an anarchist is just thinking more anarchistically is so liberty in, in itself. Yeah. Once you start to understand how to apply the tools of anarchism to your, your life, right? You, you do start to see shit di you just differently. You're like, oh, that's some bullshit. Well, how do you, but that, that, no, that's just some bullshit. Like that's just power dynamic analysis 101 here to see that. You see how that, that shouldn't be. Yeah. There you go. That is bullshit, right? It's just, yeah. Publicly funded too. Ooh, scary socialist interwebs. Um, oh. Hey, super amazing. What's up? A guy from Sweden, the exact same as me, only he speaks a different language and is born on a different piece of dirt. Yep. We need to abolish nations and then colonize other planets and hate each other based on planets like in the expanse. Dude, Maleficarum, we're headed there. If we survive the crunch of um, ecological change, uh, I think we're headed there. Do the expanse has got probably the one of the most realistic takes on human sort of like development. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, dude. Some we people would go to fucking mine out there or some shit, and we'd instantly other them. They'd be our bitch. They'd grow to resent us. The people growing up on Mars by second generation, they're Martians, right? Like the first generations would be like our adopted home, right? But second generation born on Mars, dude. The first kid that's born on Mars, the first fucking Terran Martian, right? Like that. That is that's a moment. There's no going back from there. There's no going back from that moment once it happens. Like you understand that like we, we will, we will other each other. We will, we will chauvinize and we will collectivize and we will all, oh, it will be dude. the expanse. I legitimately think the expanse got it the closest, you know, minus the alien goo stuff. No, they're Muscovites. Mars will be renamed to Musk to Mustopia. Um, and we're going to be so racist to that kid. Yeah, 100%. Actually, the first kid, we won't be. Uh, well, some people will be, AJ. Some people will be. But the first kid will be seen as a novelty. The second kid will be seen as a threat. Um, If not for the ancient alien tech, Expanse would pretty much be a documentary from the future. Malefic Harem, I agree. Yeah, if it's not for the goo shit and the fucking alien stuff, honestly, that's a pretty accurate telling of how humanity would likely develop in that scenario um everyone just assumes that aliens are so much smarter and will enslave us i mean you know most of them probably can't get to us uh oh god something went by i saw me get tagged <sighs> did you know that russia and ukraine had a treaty on military bases in crimea which ukraine did not abide by have you heard about the minsk agreements have you also heard that ukraine surrendered their uh um their uh nuclear munitions uh to ensure russia would never set foot on ukraine sovereign territory and then russia violated that treaty near immediately russia has never honored any treaty with ukraine russia has never honored practically any treaty they've signed with anyone russia has no honor holding russian leadership and uh and uh um foreign policy to any level of honesty and good faith and integrity historically contemporarily is just not worth doing um one can definitely argue that for u.s leadership as of a late as of late and well you know historically as well i mean look at the all of the native treaties um but i mean the fact of the matter is is that you're gonna fucking come at me with russia fucking and a treaty with ukraine oh come on Russia has never abided by any treaty they've ever signed with anybody for more than five minutes or when it's occasionally convenient for them. Right? Come on. They're going to tell an anarchist this? How about, how about the Leninist treaties with Machno and the violations thereof? Right? This, this pattern of behavior with this little uh, property, uh, this little piece of land and this group of people has been this way for a very long time. I'm an anarchist. Your fucking bullshit fu uh, country has shelled my people, taken us out back, fucking stabbed us and shot us in the woods. Look, I don't like you. Okay? And when I say you, I mean how your system is arranged over there. Russia is bullshit for a whole lot of reasons. Right? This is, this is the truth of the matter. Russia and, our, and anarchists do not get along. Okay? Because we know you for what you are. Okay? 
You are a bunch of imperial colonial uh, col uh, colonizing fucks, just like the rest of Europe. Don't even fucking get it twisted. Every time you guys get a fucking chance over in Russia, you go on a little colonizing spree. Fucking was Central Asia. Jesus Christ. Look at the Buryat soldiers. You're like, oh, how'd that end up? I wonder how it ended up that way. Fucking Russian, uh, Russian expansionism. Just like all the other European nations that do colonialism, right? Miss me with that shit. You're talking to an anarchist. Russia's bullshit. The U.S. is bullshit. Europe's bullshit. Hell, African nations are bullshit. They probably need them as a stepping stone to actually try and f fix some of the organizational mess that f fuck the European nations have left them with. Um, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. It's bullshit. You're going to come at me with fucking treaty violations. Russia's never honored a treaty as long as they've existed. Jesus Christ. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> Oh. I propose I, 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 um, The first kid will be like a Gerber baby after that Yeah, exactly I propose a mass drop of sneeches on the beaches To all the people who identify as Cossacks <laughs> I assume that aliens would be more advanced in ballistic weaponry To the point where they have no defense thereof It helps me sleep at night um, Yeah, right, Rev Like we just shoot an sh uh, artillery shell Right through their like electronic barrier they're like, how did it pass through? We're like, how does it, how, wait. And we just like walk up and put our hand through it and shit. We're like, does nobody like in the galaxy use like projectiles anymore? And I'm like, wait, what? No, all of the galactic technology is built, built around electromagnetic laser induced. You're like, holy shit, we might be able to take over the galaxy. Yeah, we just start punching them. <laughs> like, like, wait a second. We might be able to take over the galaxy. <laughs> we basically roll up with sticks and clubs. And we're like, this is our bitch now. <laughs> Welcome to it. Oh. Uh... I'm going to throw a rock. <laughs> It's true. Russia has always viewed the Central Asian con uh, constituents as their colonial subjects, and Belarus and Ukraine as their misshapen, silly little brothers. Um, here's a, oh, here's the list of the Russian political opponents who have been assassinated. Uh, just I'm assuming that's just Putin's list because if we had a list of all, yeah, it's 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 Putin's list. Okay, I was gonna say if we had a a list of all of the fucking uh, Russian political opponents who have been assassinated, we would be here scrolling for the rest of time. Because that's a very, very long list. <laughs> uh, Russia is actually a property of Delaware LLC. <laughs> um, I played Russia a lot in Hearts of Iron. It's true. Um, vigilante violence against queer folk in Russia. I mean, of course. Uh I'm not sure if there was an equivalent, an African equivalent to the European Union. I wonder how much leverage they'd have over other countries trying to exploit them. I mean, here's the thing, Cupcake, and leadership has always proven this out. It doesn't really matter, right? What matters is that the leadership that's installed in the African Union actually works for Africa or whether they work for the business interests that would be coming in. That's what would determine. It doesn't matter whether it's regional governances, nation state presidents, uh, presidents or, you know, prime ministers. Um, all that matters is whether that the, the group, the leadership is working for the people or the corporations. And so I would imagine that those that would pr likely rise in most uh, power positions within the newly formed African Union would probably be well, well connected people. And thus my suspicions would immediately be aroused as to whether they um, will be skimming off the top, diverting the dire uh, funds directly to their own pet projects and to their own corporations. How is this, how is the grift going to work? Right? If you're just skimming off the top, we can work with that. If you're redirecting funds to, you know, your brother-in-law's LLC, that's directly fucking a lot of stuff up. You can you can work with a level of grift within governance if if necessary, um, just to fucking get it off its legs. 
But truth of the matter is, they'd probably be bought, paid for. <sighs> Aw, cute Rev. What's up, chap? Chap, I've been streaming five days a week for two years. None of that's new. I don't, I don't, damn, you're streaming a ton. I, I'm probably streaming less, like, aggregate time than a year ago, maybe. Yeah. Um, xenophobic and racial violence. <laughs> um, oh no, our energetic deflection fields don't work against ballistic rocks. Uh, just spray them with a fire hose that shoots McDonald's Sprite and they vaporize instantly. Uh, and now you see how the Gungans won wars. They use the same projection shields as the droids, but use blunt. I don't, what are, wait, droids. Is this, is this Star Wars? Is Gungans Star Wars? Gungans. Is that Jar Jar? Gungans. Is that a Jar Jar? Okay. <laughs> yeah, Gungans are a Jar Jar. Okay. Uh, and now you see how the Gungans ward, how the Jar Jars won wars. What's this Gungan shit? Now you see how the Jar Jars won wars. They used the same projection shields as the droids, but used blunt and grenade-like weapons to bombard them through the shields until droids came into melee range. <laughs> public, public. I literally stopped watching partway through episode one. I don't even think I made it to the finish of episode one. I don't care. I, I have the Ridge Tridge committed to heart. I have no need for Star Wars beyond that. Just none. I, I, I really don't. I got what I need. Some people always want more and that's fine, but I, I don't I don't need more Star Wars. It's just like, I don't need more Marvel properties at this point, really, frankly, till you get something original, right? Maybe, yeah. I, 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 I'm full up. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Beast. It's for sure longer than that list. Yeah, for sure. Longer than that list. Beast. Um, sk skipping, so skipping Star Wars talk. <laughs> uh, uh, report of uh, the growth of the Orthodox Church in Russia post-Soviet era relationship with Putin. Yeah, they'd see that as a good thing, though, for twos. Um, Karina, yeah, no, no, no. The, yeah, I, the, the tone of the show has changed, but I've always had a late show. Yeah, Twitch has always had a late show. Yeah. So, seems to me that Russia's going full Christo-fascist. I mean, as they... What's new? Crimson, I've been, I've been more willing now to just take a sick day. Yeah, I, 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 I will just take one. I used to really hem and haw over it. And now it's just like, yeah, whatever. I don't feel well. I'm not doing this. <laughs> Simple as that. Everyone knows and loves the Gungans. True Star Wars fans know Jar Jar is the best characters. Not missing out on anything that way, to be honest. A radical criticism. Oh, uh, what's up? What's up, Chris? I presume. Uh, watch the fight. The lightsaber fights. Just watch those. Um, they pump out so much. While the tie-ins are cool, it makes it hard to just jump in the middle of a random movie. I just, you know, <laughs> who isn't going Christo fascist right now? It's all the rage, AJ. All the cool kids are going, you know, uh, Christo fascist.
I mean, right, beast. Oh, okay. So is is the is the Russian? Um, they're not allowed to call that. Um, I'm drugs. Oh god, this could be a fucking thing. What what? So now they're claiming to hate the Russian government too. <laughs> Nonsense. Yeah, the situation is pretty unambiguous. Russia's doing a Russia. Right? It's like when the U.S. invaded the Middle East last time. Did anybody really? It's like, dude, anybody with a level of analysis is like, what's happening? Oh, the U.S. is doing a U.S. They're invading the Middle East again. Right? Like, what's what's happening? Oh, Russia's doing a Russia. <laughs> They're expanding their borders towards strategic resources and ports. Who would have guessed? I'm so shocked. Russia's doing a Russia. Like, I, 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 you know, oh, and committing war crimes. It's, you know, it's, that's European tradition at this point. But Kai, they had weapons of mass destruction. Yeah. <laughs> I love the, I love the, 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 the weapons of mass destruction. Uh, yeah, here you go. Everyone, the weapons of mass destruction. We found lots of weapons of mass destruction. Oh, we found lots. Yep. Or... In the words of the late, great Bill Hicks, they had weapons of mass destruction. How do you know? We have the receipt. Yeah. That's why, that's why Russian, Russian standing Russia is hilarious. It's like, oh, you thought it was an American. It's like, yeah, no, this is why you can't get away with this shit in front of us. Because, homie, we roll deep. This is America you're talking to here. Like, come on. You think we don't know game when we see it? Come on. Putin's playing you. Putin's playing this whole fucking thing. <laughs> he needs to do this. He's got the dictator's dilemma up his ass on this one, too. Like, come on. Don't fucking get it twisted, man. Don't the He's invading for to denazify it first, and then the fucking goal uh, fucking get moved. Next thing you know, you're fucking scrambling to hold on. What do you got already? And now they're striking in. Like, the whole thing is a fucking farce, man. Come on. Don't, don't play. Um, fucking dig. We got like a couple of Russian stands. Dig. We got like some people that were like, but, but, but. Which is always fun. Um. Oh, and in the time you were gone, Dig, Aspen managed to buy a, a, a lamb. Uh, don't get attached to it. <laughs> it's, uh, I'll just put it that way. Um. But yeah, in that time, Aspen managed to go out and buy a lamb. Oh, boom, boom. All you have to understand as far as Middle East politics go with the U.S. and what they do, chaos is good for business. Anybody who brings stable stabilization into a region is bad for business. That's, that's, dude, that's, we can work. We can work. Okay, look, all we need is a ta t tales of an economic hitman, right? You go in, you buy them off. 
look, you willing to like just sell your assets to us? Fine, cool. Here's the check. You're on the payroll. What do you want, by the way? Do you need any military assets? You good? We good? Right? Like, that's step one. You take the fucking check. If they stop taking the check or they refuse to take the check, that's when the CIA goes in. The CIA goes in next and CIA fucking destabilizes and sets up little, like, you know, milita- militant groups and stuff like that. They That's their their gig, right? They run ops against you and that sort of thing. Now, if the CIA, CIA doesn't get it, then the Marines go in. Right? And, and that's, that's, that's the three steps to how the U.S. interacts in these areas. So it really doesn't matter, like, you know, whether we toppled the, uh, you know, uh, we toppled Saddam so the Sunnis could, uh, could be busy with the Shia, you know, and then most terrorist groups are, are uh, Sunnis. It does, it, all you have to understand is fucking as long as they're operating in a chaotic manner, like, if, if you won't be on our payroll, we just need chaos. That's all. We, we can work with that. Yeah. So destabilizing any leadership in the region, um, as, even if it leads to what you would see as like, uh, you know, more terrorist activity. Great. Good for business. Means the budget will go up next year. Yeah. Everybody will benefit from that. It, not us, of course, and not the people of the Middle East, but the military industrial complex and the, you know, entities that be for sure. Uh, yeah, uh, dig. I told you not to get attached to it. Uh, that lamb is not intended to be a pet. Um, America, world police, here to save the motherfucking day, yeah. Um, this is, yeah, this is a spook. Uh, I, I, uh, fair enough, Dick. Yeah, see, it, he's, uh, they, um, I think, yeah, because, wait, it's Aspen that just got the U, and Aspen is, is NB, so they. Um, I had to work that through in my head. I'm like, I could see the Discord profile even for you, Aspen. I was like, wait, Aspen is they. Um, yes, um, I'm sure uh, I'm sure they will uh, absolutely care for it quite well, um, in, up until the point where it shall not be in there. Uh, Aspen, question. Do you use an abattoir um, or do you do the deed yourself or does someone in family do it? Brothers, father, uncle, neighbor, who, who does the deed? Do you use an abattoir or do you use a, um, I'm saying, okay, so, uh, so I say abattoir. <laughs> I've adopted the British usage of it because it's far more gentler than slaughterhouse or butcher <laughs> you know it's it's the english language on this one is rough <laughs> i wouldn't mind softening it a little <laughs> uh pandora's quill thanks for the follow um every year we have a do- half a dozen lamb orphans we bring up they all have names and every single time i'm the last one they see dude rumble who i i don't know if i can do the naming the naming is where I get hung up there, but that's, I'm more of a, uh, um, I'm more of a hunter. I'll tell you that right now, Rumble. Um, I'm the guy that would happily trade you like venison or something for, for what you brought up. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm a hunter, not a farmer. Y'all are a different breed than me. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't mind putting down a fucking animal, but I can't raise an animal and put it down. That's not something I have in me. Yeah, I got no problem taking a fucking life, but there's no way I can raise it and kill it. So it's either I raise it and then somebody else does the deed or somehow it gets raised and then I do the deed. I'm fine with that.
are there animals that I wouldn't mind killing um, if I farmed them? If, if certain critical mass, yeah, it's all about numbers. I need them to not be individuals. So I need like two dozen chickens, maybe three dozen chickens. Yeah, three dozen chickens maybe would be, I, I would depersonalize them and I'd just be like, they are chickens, right? And there might be one or two standouts that get a, get a fucking reprieve from the governor, a pardon from the governor. Um, God, I'd start collecting chickens. Uh, rabbits are stupid and they breed so much. It's stupid. I mean, clearly Aspen has killed a rabbit. Apparently, and it's not fun. I don't think I could kill a person or animal unless it had wronged me somehow. If a wolf bites me and a guy groups me, uh, their favorite game for eating. Uh... Rabbits scream like humans when they die. Good to know. Good to know. Okay. Well then. I would rather talk about Russian war crimes now. Good luck, Dig. Oh, are they, wait, are they, are they doing something else other than the, wait, 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 wait. Oh my God. Wait, no, wait, this is from a while ago. Yeah, it's from a while ago. Um, yeah, their most recent one, dude, uh, Malefa Karim. They um, had a hostage situation at their headquarters and a fucking person called 911 saying they had been like, they're being held hostage and tortured and shit on site. The police had a fucking uh, standoff with them. SWAT had a fucking uh, standoff with them. When they got in there, somebody had shot themselves in the fucking head. Uh, Gab uh, Gabby or whatever the fucking clown one is uh, claiming that the police shot themselves. Wait, hang on. Oh, interesting. Wait, this is new. They just got outed as funded by the FSB. Jesus Christ. Of course they are. Of course they are. All right. So a rally against, uh, no, no, no. Let's start here. Gazi, Gazi. Yeah, Gazi. Gazi? God, it's probably Gazi. Anyway, uh, claim they traveled to San Francisco to protest Meta. Um, pushing anti-Russian propaganda, stealing the election, blah, blah, blah. Um, here are the clowns themselves. Okay, so according to the indictment, Ionov also directed the efforts of U.S. political group two based in Atlanta. For example, as recently as March 20, uh, 2022, Ionov paid for members of U.S. political group two, including its founder, UIC5, to travel from Atlanta to San Francisco to protest at the headquarters of a social media company that placed content restrictions on posts supporting Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Ionov sent UIC5 designs for signs used at the protest and funded cross-country travel for UIC5 and other members of U.S. political group two after the, I presume, UIC5 is Gazi. Uh, uh, after the protest, I announced sent UIC5 a picture of the Russian news website social media page, which displayed a Russian language news story about the protest. This morning, the Vice President of the International Human Rights Committee, Alexander Ionov, released a statement for calling for justice for George Floyd and all colonists. People died, in power, uh, died at the hands of white power colonial terrorism, aka America's racist police system. Uh, oh, good. Black Hammer is a Russian op. I would, you know, for as much damage as they were doing, I would have thought they were one of ours. We always thought they were an op. Like, we've been on the position of they were an op for a while. But honestly, I thought they might have been ours. It was the damage they were doing to the left over here. I, I, you know, 
undermining indigenous movements, fight, banging up the left, being just create anti-vaxxer shit. Like I was like, you know, um, but yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah. I mean, they're an op, but Russian op. I love I love that they called out Antifa and anarchists and shit. Did the Russians really We will never forget. We will never forget. We still got these fucking idiots in here? Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's the problem, probably. Senpaga, the problem is, is that the. It's not that you don't just see a different, and there's no difference between Russians, Ukrainians, and Belarusians. What you don't see is a difference between sovereign territories. Your nation, state, and its people act as if the the line doesn't exist. Your imperialist, colonialist cocks. And you act like you have a right to other people's shit. Stop. This is coming from an American for fuck's sake. Knock off with the expansionism. Y'all are making a grab, and the whole world knows it. Stop. Stop defending it. Stop whataboutting it. Stop pointing fingers at other places. Jesus Christ. This is like when we invaded fucking Afghanistan and Iraq. And Saudi Arabia, fuck, we said Saudi, there were more Saudi Arabians on the fucking 9-11 flight than any, anything, right? And we invade Iraq and fucking Afghanistan. Rest, we're just sitting here going, what the fuck, man? Come on. Don't fucking piss on my leg and tell me it's raining. This is some bullshit. Your country's doing a fucking land grab. You're in the middle of a fucking land grab and you're fucking like, oh, it's self-defense as we push our border further and further along. It's self-defense. We have no choice but to take this land. Oh, we have no choice but to take this port. Oh, we have no choice but to claim this piece and this piece and this piece. Oh, stop punching us. We'll be forced to take your next segment of land. Oh, no. Jesus Christ. Stop punching me. Stop making you punch me. Hey, for the safety of the country, we must rule the whole world. That's very Russian. That's very Russian. It's very American, too. It's very Chinese, too. It's almost like imperialist countries, uh, uh, well, have a tendency to do that. Which you made me do. Right? Yeah. I just... Fucking A. Tankies also defend the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan and Chechnya. Of course they do. <sighs> I've seen the, I, I, I don't think I've seen the Chechnya one, but I've seen the Afghanistan one, Gord. I've seen the, the, the tanky defensive fucking Afghanistan. And it's like, oh, for fuck's sake. Jesus Christ, guys. Like, <laughs> at least when America does it, we can just get other countries to fight the wars for us. Not officially our fault. Proxy wars. We learned proxy wars from Europe. Dad taught us. Yeah, dad taught us how to how to run a proxy war. 
Uh, the defense of Chechen is that they just full on believe they were working with the Nazis. Cool. All right. So, Stalin worked with the Nazis. Should we denazify Stalin? Denazify Stalin. Defending itself from terrorist attacks. That eh, sounds about right. That's usually the go-to for a large nation state that wants to do some imperial conquest. Yeah, we were defending ourselves. Oh, shit. We just happened to... Oh, okay. Well, we were in the region, you know. Spoils of war and all. I mean, yeah. I mean, it depends how you want it. The dude, yeah, the Soviets put up fucking numbers. The Soviets put up numbers. The I always love when the uh, the so, uh, the fucking uh, Russian stands come through and they try and like the Russians has sa uh, the Russians sacrifi uh, sacrificed they'll 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 have a number it will be somewhere between twenty five and forty million usually like is where they'll lay down you know it's like it's, it's, sometimes it's they, they'll hold the twenty you know and it's like oh you know we. There were 20 million Russians that died in World War II. 17 of them are Ukrainian. Right? It's like that. They threw Ukrainian bodies at the, at the problem. That's been Russia's solution is to use its various minority groups, outlier uh, territories, and various vassal states as bodies in a, uh, a war. They, they just throw bodies at the problem. That's, that's been Russia's go-to move for generations. And so World War II was a lot of Ukrainians. A lot of Ukrainians. Yeah. And so it's always hilarious to have them do that one. And it's like, oh, fucking Russia. It's like, actually, it was Ukraine that we have mostly to thank. Gee, almost as if Buffalo Soldier. Um... Insert Zap Brannigan line about murder bots. Yep, Stalin had a quote I can't remember. This is nonsense. Uh, nah. Nah, Pandora, I knew where you were coming from on that one. Yeah, no, it's 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 been this way for ages. And for to, to see people fucking it's like, oh come on. Don't don't bullshit. Uh, Senpaga, are you on the eastern side of Ukraine? Where are you getting reports of this? Because we had violent caravans full of South American murderers reported at a national level here. Coming at us. Doesn't make it true. So where are you getting that information? Just out of curiosity. Fuck mass incarceration, homie. I mean, yes. Violent caravans before elections are the violentest. The most. We have the best, most violentest caravans in the world. And we need to stop them. Uh, Sampaga says they're an anarchist. No, they're not. No, they're not. Um, anyway. <laughs> Uh, better than your FSB backed source. We already know fucking where your shit comes from. We don't even have to wonder. Ours may be in air quotes, air quotes. Yours is straight up from the FSB. Just talking points from the state. Y 
you de- yes, you are decide who anarchist and who don't say it to Kropotkin and Bakunin, smug cocksucker. Uh, you say it to Kropotkin and Bakunin, you smug cocksucker. The fact of the matter is, is that you're in support of authoritarian and uh, uh, authoritarian systems. You're you're in defense of hierarchical organizational methodologies. The reason you're not a, uh, an anarchist isn't because I've said you're not an anarchist. The reason you're not an anarchist is because every single thing you've said in chat has been antithetical to the position of an anarchist that has studied the likes of Kropotkin and Bakunin, you so, who you so flippantly invoke. And the likes of which, if you were truly an anarchist, hey there, Alex, welcome and thank you for the raid. If you were truly an anarchist who had truly read uh, Kropotkin and Bakunin, then you would understand the antithetical nature to which Russia operates, given historical and modern context to the uh, to the uh, philosoph- uh, philosophies ascribed by especially Bakunin. Jesus Christ, the reason you're not an anarchist, man, is because you haven't said any anarchist shit. Everything you've said is in support and defense of an imperialist land grab. That's the reason you're not a fucking anarchist, man. And I'm merely pointing out, hey Caleb, I'm merely pointing out what chat has been pointing out the entire time, man. Is that, ha ha ha, they say they're an anarchist. Everybody was laughing at you. Because you're fucking standing Vladimir Putin and a Russian imperialist expansionist land grab at the same time as saying you're an anarchist. You're a joke. Oh yeah, float for sure. They've always been an OG imperialist power. <laughs> Kropotkin was a toast aficionado, and that's what I appreciate about him. Mate, mate. I support and ready to defense people of Donetsk and Lugansk with weapon in hand. Go to Iraq and save lives, mate. Um, A got... God, it sucks to suck, says Aspen. What's wrong with sucking cocks, says uh, uh, Aka? Hey, uh, what? Senpai? Uh, Senpaga. Senpaga. Why would I go elsewhere to defend when I have my own community of marginalized people, such as the LGBT community, which you're fucking Russians murder and other and marginalize and drag through the streets violently and attack and assault and rape on a regular basis that need defending from the likes of you, Senpaga, you fucking bigoted piece of garbage. Hi. You wanted to play? Let's play. Anyway, hmm. Anyway, mm-hmm. Cock, you say? <laughs> Puka. Um. Ah, thank you. Thank you, non binary. Mm, good on you. Uh, pound coin. Yo! I heard there was cock. Talk about my grandparents who in 2014 lived for weeks in basement of their house because real Nazi under the artillery fire of 155 millimeter caliber. <laughs> uh, well, that's a shame about your grandparents. Do they happen to live in an air to- uh, area that Russia has tried to expand into unlawfully and militarily and thus had to be pushed back militarily? Did Russia float? Do we know if Russia had 155s? 
because that would be hilarious if they just explained to us that Russia shelled their grandparents unknowingly. Is that a thing that can be verified? Uh, excuse me. I was promised cock, yet there is no hair or dick root in sight. <laughs> the Russian special operation is actually highly targeted. Just today, they destroyed a Nazi bus stop in Mikulov, uh, Mikulov, uh taking out three Azov pedestrians, two Azov dog walkers, and their highly trained militant Nazi dogs. No, they both had SU min munitions until the West gave them a, do a few dozen 155s uh, weapons this year. Okay. Well, uh, Senpaga, hey Senpaga, Senpaga, question, question. There seems to be some, some doubt being thrown upon your story again. As, as is tradition at this point, not that I'm saying you're a Russian operative, paid operative at all uh, or anything. Um, but how were NATO rounds raining down on your grandparents' house? Just, just out of curiosity. Well, Sinpaga, according to your Prokenian uh, and Bakunian roots, you, my friend, cannot declare me an anarchist or non-anarchist, right? Isn't that your position earlier that you were arguing? Your very position right out of the gate was, who am I to not declare you an anarchist? And had I truly read the greats of the likes of Kropokin and Bakunin, I would understand that one cannot declare another not an anarchist. And yet in the same breath, Sempaga, it seems you have declared me not an anarchist. How ideologically inconsistent it seems to have been, uh, you, uh, you seem to have proven yourself. At the same time as not exactly being based in fact either. So anyway, let us continue on through this wonderful segment. And I'm not sure you are a human at all. Oh, look at the dehumanizing part. I love that. I love the dehumanization. Uh, that's never a pattern amongst these types of people, is it? Have fun with independent sources and shit. Maidan 2014 in Kiev literally ruined lives and it's just undo. I don't know what that means. <sighs> uh, this has been uh, this has led to the obsolescence of larger caliber weapons, such as one seventy five and the two hundred three. Although some militaries retain one hundred fives for the light and portability, Russian guns and those of the former Soviet bloc countries tend to use one five twos. Hmm, interesting. The Russians have a 155 SPG based on the T-80 chassis since the late 80s, I think. Says Pound. Let's see. BT-7, maybe? The Soviet BT-7 might have had a 155? No, there's 155 of those made. It's not, it doesn't have a 155. Yeah, like this is... Uh, anyway. Yeah, it's a 152. Yeah, pound. I, was, I went looking to pound just to check, but no. Um, not binary. Literally served in the Baltic. Um... Hunter's Crack Dealer, welcome. Um, you're pretty famous, Hunter's Crack Dealer. Uh, what's up? Holy shit. Uh, oh, uh, that woolly mammoth person got themselves banned, apparently. Um, I don't even think we had a hand in that one. <laughs> so 
but the bullets and Super Saiyan Boy. Thank you for the follows. Give me a second here. I'm just looking at something from behind the scenes. Okay, that's weird. Yeah, good find on that cupcake. What's my views on Orthodox Christianity? Or orthodoxy is just more fucked version of the Abrahamic fucked stuff. Fuck all of it. How many fucks can I fit into that? Yeah, no. I, my view on orthodoxy is it's just any any of that, dude. Oh God, any of the fundamentalist orthodox sex, any of the the the. I I, I don't look. I'm not a fan. Uh, okay, so Jesus was kind of a cool do guy. Jesus was kind of a cool guy. My opinion on everything else is fuck all of it. Just like all of it. Just all of it. Okay, like, yeah. So the like more strict and more rigid and more hierarchical that you get about your weirdness fuck it even more at that point like, right like that's that's how that rolls for me uh jesus kind of cool guy i i wish his people would be like do more of what he said and less of what the the building said you know that'd be great oh shit i've been trying to mean to, i've been meaning to try crack since that story broke Hunter, Hunter's crack dealer. Where are you? We got a fucking customer base for you all already. Yeah, well, I mean, that in the slave thing, Rev. He's got some fucking low marks. But, I mean, you know, I mean, out of that book? Out of that book? Dude, I'll fucking take Jesus 10 times out of 10. Jesus, fuck. That book is a nightmare book. And 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 the trilogy. But dude, the whole trilogy is a fucking nightmare. Uh, let me just throw my hat in the ring. I'm down for some cracks that we just made a banger. See? Hunter's crack dealer. Where the fuck are you? Ah, oh, they never have you know. Yeah, truly, generally speaking, Jesus is the least problematic character. <laughs> Nonsense. When Jesus said, Father, why have you forsaken me? What he was really saying was, Cry check out my righteous eight-pack future, worshippers. Is the Book of Mormon fanfic? Are the Deeths uh, basically Pottermore? Uh, given the collaborative storytelling nature of the entirety of the, of the OG material, I would argue that there is no such thing as fanfic and the Bible itself is a, uh, is a collaborative storytell. Therefore, any other associative uh, storytelling that, uh, any other storytelling that is associated with it by extension is a part of the collaborative storytelling process. I would say, I would rule that the Hadiths are, uh, and Mormonism are not fanfic. They are in fact, uh, um, part of the story. Yep, they're 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 lore. They're canon lore. Yeah, they're canon. No, I I, I argue Jesus is a group storytelling project to start with. Yeah, over generations, no group, no one person, no one group has any claim on this. Especially once you start bringing in the 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 ancient Egyptians into the into the discussion. You want to bring up Horus in this one. Hey, I'm assuming this is what you probably piloted. Uh, it was introduced in 2020. Wait, hold on. Nope, 2006. So Ukraine wouldn't have had it, but Russia would have. Hilarious. Battle of the Camel. All right, I'll hold on to that, actually. 
Uh, all hail Yerobeth, uh, the fool. Suck that suck, Liz, dude. He suck. Uh, uh, yeah, float. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking uh, float. Yeah, they were all banging kids. Um, hold on. Uh, there's a, there's a colorized painting of him. Hold on. Hold on. I have it somewhere. Oh, nope, 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 nope. There we go. There we go. Here's a colorized photo of Joseph Smith uh, and his wife. It's not the greatest work, but it is, I mean, it's all you need to know. Yeah, there's a black and white equivalent to this, Chapo. It's just colorized beyond belief. But yeah. She was um, 14. He was 38. Y years were um, uh, rougher on people back then. But yes, he was 38 and she was 14. Her name, and her name was Helen Marr Kimball. Um, so... It's not a mystery. This isn't from fucking the year zero. Fucking this motherfucker was on the U.S. census. Right? <laughs> Good luck, Cass. Yeah, don't have compulsory military service. It's a bad idea. Yeah. That's that's just a bad idea. Plenty of our people had to flee from our government when we had it, too. Welcome to it. Sucks, man. Get out if you can. But you don't see the problem? That you're hiding from your own government because they want to make you fight in something that you don't want to fight in? That like maybe there might be something to what we've been saying about how Russia is kind of a garbage place. Yeah, I know. It's pretty rough to get out of there. I don't know the first thing about sneaking out of Russia. I literally couldn't even suggest the first thing. I could tell you how to get out of my country. I could tell you how to sneak out of America a few different ways. Yeah. I, 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 I live in an imperialist dickhead nation that is completely full of itself um, and keeps tabs on its citizens to the nth degree. Why wouldn't I be aware of a few fire exits in my own nation state? Why don't you is my question. Like, uh, dude, these places are fucking nightmares. You gotta. Oh, God. Not every single war is started by America. We start a lot of them. Good portion of them. But not everything is America. Don't don't give in to the like America bad, therefore everything America mentality. Right? Like, there's other players on the board. Like, did you think, like, European conquest just disappeared out of nowhere? Like, do you think that Russian conquest just disappeared out of nowhere? Do you think Chinese conquest just disappeared out of nowhere? Do you think that the nation-state entity, nationalism, chauvinistic human behavior has just disappeared out of nowhere? That only America is the only player on the board who is only able to make the moves that only affect... Dude... Come on. Yeah, we're a big player. We're a big player. 
arguably the largest sponsor of uh, terrorism in the world. But that America bad, therefore nobody else takes action mentality is the dumbest thing that happens on the left. It's the dumbest thing. It's just stupid. No, you literally said it's actually America starting all the wars. It's literally recorded in the chat log. It's the first thing you said. Again. <sighs> literally said. It's actually America starting all of the wars. First statement in chat. Come on, man. Then pivot. Then leg change. Float. America just got a bit out of hand, but let's let's be real. China and Russia are way more likely to start shit. Like I, you know, it's not like Britain was discussing emancipa emancipation before we rebelled or anything. Um, Sweat the bullets. Yeah, I'm done talking to you. Um, I don't know if I saw, like, wait, what? Oh, no, yeah, we already covered that. Non-binary. Yeah, we covered it at the top. I did an entire fucking thing on Russian cover-up of war crimes in the region and walked through some of it. Yeah, I already done that. Um... Oh, God, cats have a look into the book of Enoch. Oh. Uh, yeah, I, I sweat the bullets. I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I don't believe the Bible, or most religions for this matter, are not meant to be taken literally. The Bible specifically, I'm Christian, so it's a moment in my knowledgeable field, very well states God didn't create the Bible. Moses, Moses wrote the first five books. Mark, uh, 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 wait, it'd be Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, um, wrote the Gospels, etc. Uh, sweat. <laughs> sweat you're human right you're just a human right how do how, how we can't even grasp the size of the universe the size just the size let alone how it works let alone what powers it let alone the name of the dude behind it right like Okay, so how, 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 how has any human being grasped this information? These are stories. They're allegories. They're moral tales. They're ways to manipulate society. They're not truth. If there's a God, it's an inconceivable thing. It, you can't even begin to, the, the word God can't even begin to, it's a two-dimensional representation of an 11th dimensional entity. It's, it's, it's an impossibility. We can never come to even possibly know for a, a fraction of a second the true nature of existence. It's just an impossibility for a species as limited as us. How anybody claims to know truth is beyond me. The stories came to be by people telling stories and looking to control people. That's all. Yeah, oh yeah, beast of, I mean, it's, it's just, it's a fucking mess. I mean, people use it to inform their processes and how they interact with human beings. Look, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll make room for like, like I said, the Jesus dude seems kind of cool. 
And when I speak abstractly about this, know that I can cite like chapter and verse for a lot of stuff. And that we have theological discussions that I'm an ordained minister have been for many years. And that we have like 38, 40 ministers in this community. Um, we just, dis we discuss this at a fairly deep level sometimes, but the fact of the matter is I'm going to just crib this really quickly. The fact of the matter is, is the Jesus dude has a couple of really good stories that people should fo uh, follow and pay attention to. And the rest of it's fucking, some of it's historical writing. Some of it's just garbage and literally like patriarchal fucking just bigoted genocidal garbage. And to count that series of books, that trilogy with some weird satellite pieces, looking at you Mormons, um, to use that as a moral or ethical framework base. Oh, Jesus Christ. I just can't imagine. The earth is the nucleus for your universal soul, says Jack Spratt. Wouldn't it be nice, Jack? Wouldn't it be nice? Of course, I'm guessing you probably don't have a whole lot of evidence to that, uh, to, to point that out. But I, I've done a fair amount of mushrooms, Jack. I've got a hippie that lives, lives deep in my soul that would love it to be. Um, but I gotta tell you, I got no evidence whatsoever. Rev, it's, 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 it's probably part of the process. It's part of the fictionalized planning that we do. Um... Uh, Sweat, as long as you don't ever take it as reality, and as long as you don't use it as the basis for your moral or ethical frameworks, have at the book as much as you want. <laughs> Banger. Fair play. Um, fair play, Banger. I always spell thanks for the follow. Zombified, thanks for the follow. I need more water. Um, and I want to refresh this. So. Oh. I will leave you with something. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to leave you with, though. I will take longer to find this video than I will actually take to get the water. Know that. Uh, what's something stupid and pointless? Oh, you know what? Um, yeah, why not? This will be fine. You close. You open. Humble PD's response tonight, Shelly. Eric, this arrest happened back in June. All right, cool. Enjoy. From his attorney and Humble PD's response tonight, Shelly. Eric, this arrest happened back in June, but surveillance video is only just now surfacing through social media. Humble police say their officer did not strike this man, but the but the man's attorney says this video speaks for itself. When I watched it, I was blown away. This is the surveillance video from outside a bar in Humble that shows the moments a police officer takes down Chris Hanna. He asked my client to raise his hands, it appears. He raises his hands, just like this, and the officer reaches for, I believe, his right hand. Yes, sir. In the officer's hand, I believe his right hand, he's holding his handcuffs. And then as soon as he takes my client's hand down this way, he turns and hits him almost like uppercut, holding the handcuffs in his hands almost like brass knuckles and knocks him out. And moments later, Hannah, already laying flat with the officer on top of him, is picked up by the back of the neck, 
His head slammed into the ground. Hannah says he still does not even remember this takedown, but was conscious as he was taken to the police unit, where he was immediately bandaged, he says, because of the amount of blood coming from his head. That bandage is clear in this booking photo from Humble Police. But Police Chief Ken Tice sending us this statement, saying in part, once the suspect continued to attempt to put space between himself and Officer Cox, the officer took the suspect down onto a patch of grass and handcuffed him without further incident. At no time did the officer strike the suspect, and it was determined the injuries suffered by the suspect were caused solely by the altercation in which he was involved prior to Officer Cox's arrival. Attorney Todd Overstreet says it's clear his head was not injured before the officer takedown. He's sitting there calmly. He's still wearing his baseball cap. He's not holding his head. He's not attending to any wound. The attorney says Officer John Cox was initially dispatched to the scene when Hannah called 911 himself out of fear for his own life during a parking lot altercation. Hannah admittedly fired a gun he was legally storing in his car, but turned it over to Officer Cox when he arrived. This portion of the surveillance <laughs> video shows the Where's second interaction with Officer Cox as Hannah was sitting and waiting to be questioned. What he did at that point is inexcusable. It's police brutality. There's no other way to look at it. We've asked Dumble Police if there is an internal investigation into this arrest and if the trust them and they want to know why they have a public image problem it's because of things like this All right. so wait do we have a Scientologist is that really a thing that's happened and yeah good old humble Texas Oh. All right. Uh, yeah. Of course, cupcake. There you go. Enochian fucks you're talking about uh, <laughs> um, You mean John D Like that's, that's I mean that's who uh, Oh uh, um, Fucking I don't trying to think like i know there's the adamical thing um but yeah i don't know what you're after um that's amazing though we have a, a scientologist <laughs> oh god i mean it's Jesus, caboose. Jesus. <laughs> oh, that video. Oh. Uh, yeah. It's somehow less uncanny. I know, right? It's because it brought it out the other side, right? The uncanny valley is that, caboose. So, like, uh, or uh, that for your screen, right? So... It, it, it was it was hanging out down here so like real would have pushed it this way but they just brought it back uh this way they brought it back towards the original like digital version oh jesus gnostics oh do you think jim jones could pull off what he did back then now I have to tell you, my immediate instinct was yes. My immediate instinct was yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I kind of yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. My, uh, my, um, my grandfather spoke Hebrew. <laughs> Let me see it when it's done, nonsense. Let me see it when it's done. Did you know Tomato Scream? L. Ron Hubbard proved it. Oh. Uh. Did, um, did y'all see what uh, the president of Uganda did to uh, Netanyahu during uh, uh, Netanyahu visited Uganda um, tr trying to mend ties with them? Um, <clears throat> they have a rocky relationship. Um, apparently, Uganda's president... The entire, he didn't, this wasn't like a slip up. The entire meeting with Benjamin Netanyahu, he called Israel Palestine. Every time he referred to Israel, he called it Palestine. Straight up. Yeah. <laughs> Benjamin Netanyahu went to repair relations with Uganda after, after a touch and go raid that they conducted 40 years ago, basically. Um, they, Benjamin, Benjamin fucking goes to the city. He just, yeah. And, oh yes. And in, in Palestine, the land where your people dwell. Oh yeah. The entire fucking time. He just called Israel Palestine for the whole meeting. <laughs> uh... Thanks for the follows. Yeah, it, it's 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 amusing. Um. Oh, also, yeah. Hey, um, this is some shit that we need to think about. Remember when we talk about like the single family zoning problem? How every time I fucking start rolling my eyes and groaning about how single family zoning policies are killing the fucking the, uh, killing this nation, um. Quote, this is going to sound wild to anyone who lives in the U.S., but for any two-story row house in Tokyo, the owner can by right operate a bar, a restaurant, a boutique, a small workshop on the ground floor, even in most residential zone sections of the city. That means you have potential micro spaces. Any elderly homeowner could decide to rent out the bottom floor of their place to some young kid who wants to start a coffee shop. Um, and then you have what they call Yokocho alleyways. Those small, dingy little alleyways that like, you know, we, we, we have come to love all those tiny little bars and restaurants crammed into spaces like that. That's because by right, everybody who has one of those two story buildings can run a, a business out of it just by default what a concept being able to build your living into the local community and make sure that your livelihood isn't remote from you and that you control it that you have I don't like the, the elderly renting the space out the bottom floor not a big fan of that, but okay, we could, we could get some, we can talk, we can talk. Um, <clears throat> we ain't got no two stories around here, but Rev, who cares about the two story? Extend the thought process. Why can't people automatically run businesses out of their houses, right? That, that should be a thing that there should be every 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 residence should automatically be a licensed small business just like by default why can't everybody why do i have to go out of my way to try and earn my living yeah i've seen plenty of places that run businesses in the front and house in the back when i was in japan small shops bars etc like there should uh, i'm really do make some i'm really working on the godhead this is my last thing I made before shattering my leg.
Yeah, but fuck laptop businesses and Shopify stores. Andy, um... I, I don't know what to say. Nonsense. It's good. I, 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 dude, it's conceptual art. What the fuck am I going to say about it? It's fucking, it's, it's amusing. It's weird. It's I want to see more of it. Um, but like, <laughs> um, I, I, I like here in the state of Nevada, um, I can't have a food based business out of my house. Um, like that's not a thing. I have to have commercial cook space to produce a food product. What the fuck is that? Why can't I like, you know, meet certain, like it just, mm. anyway. Yeah. Just an idea. Just a thought. Hmm. Let's see, 25 states are one Supreme Court decision away from banning same-sex marriage. Good. Uh, no, uh, a possum, because this, it, that is not an FDA regulation. That's a state-based regulation, because in Arizona, you don't have to. Uh, it, you, you, can produce, uh, you can provide your... Oh, no, it's not about a license, Andy. I have to have a commercial kitchen. It's not about a license issue. You, you people are acting like I haven't investigated this and haven't lived in Nevada for like two decades and used to live in the neighboring state of Arizona that has differing requirements on this matter. I cannot make food ba uh, home-based food products in the state of Nevada. There is no way to clear the licensure for that. You have to rent space in a, commercial, uh, a commercially set, uh, set up kitchen or you have to set up your own. That is the food production requirement in the state of Nevada. In Arizona, I could jar food and sell it out of my front, uh, in my in my kitchen, and sell it out my front uh, front garage. This is this is not an FDA issue. This is a state based legis uh, legislation issue. And if we had overriding reg legislation, we could do that. Uber eats a menu for a store. Yeah. I mean, that's easily what you could do. Seriously. Yeah. So, again. <laughs> Can we rename Vegas Libertaria for the memes? I mean, f go for it if you want. Yeah, except for the laws where it means they can drag a black man behind the truck and string up a queer on Sundays. Fuck the South. And by the way, I lived there. Where do you think this, where do you think this drawl comes from, son? Spent too many years in Tennessee. Ended up with a bit of a southern twang when I start getting worked up and shit. Yeah. Nah, I'm good. Vegas is too hot to grow shit. In fact, I grew successfully using a backyard aquaponic system. I raised fish in the desert. In fact, it's one of the safest places to farm fish. Um, despite the water consumption, which actually we have a high reclamation system uh, in Las Vegas, um, we reclaim more water than probably all of you combined. Um, but yeah, the desert is one of the safest places to raise fish because you don't have to worry about the indigenous population being harmed. Um, if you raise, if you do monoculture in an area, you could fuck up the ecosystem. You could let fish that are non-indigenous to the area get out and fucking, they become endemic. It's a problem. See the carp in the fucking mid country. Um, if they get out here, they die. It's that simple. So yeah, um, I very successfully grew plenty of food through winter and summer, um, using a large aquaponic system in my backyard for years and years and years. Um, the basis, the, the core, the heart of it was a 200 gallon, um, farm trough. One of those industrial plastic fucking farm trough things. Um, and yeah, to so sell it on Shopify, bro. Uh, as somebody who ran a successful IT consultancy for many years, and knows what it takes to run a business that will actually set up a house for years to come. Um, it's not that simple, and it never will be. Um, when it comes to food stuffs. 
um, because of our capitalist, uh, shall we say, inter- interventionism. The, the statist interventionism um, basically does muck up that. Not a laissez-faire libertarian market guy here, but the truth of the matter is, is that, yeah, they do streamline stuff for the big boys at the top end and they hamstring the, the small guy at the, the low end. It's just the way the system operates. Anybody, anybody who's a realist can understand that. Um, so, yeah, no, it's, it's not that simple until I go home. Once I'm home, uh, for the, the viewer, uh, the, the community members, the people who have been here for ages know where home is for me. Once I go home, everything's fine. This state, this state is a fucking nightmare. But when I go home, I'm good. <laughs> yes, Rev, Vermont. Yeah, Vermont has more farmer markets per capita than most places. They have small farms. They have small growers. They don't get in the way of people. They let people just sell and trade goods. They fucking still have town meetings on shit and whether we want to, you know, and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's once once I once you go back to Vermont, it's it's a non-issue. The state's literally built around that kind of market exchange. Let the street v- senders, uh, just let the street vendors sell without license for fuck's sake. For example, see the lady selling pink sauce. I've been meaning to talk about that one. Dude, that fucking lady selling the pink sauce is hilarious. It's like, Jesus Christ. How much rice do they produce? Actually, probably a, f- you know what? Let me see. It's a, it's an environment. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, they grow they grow rice. The Northeastern USA Rice Conference, even. There is it is in a, it is a hundred percent possible, and you get more varieties out of it. Holy shit! I can okay. Brattleboro Farmers Market is where these guys sell. Uh yeah. Vermont produces rice, y'all. Um, the pink sauce story is wild. It is. Um, the clip of her like fucking loses her mind is hilarious too. Um, oh god, beast. Yeah, I know, right? Mom. Well, I would expect it kind of there. Swampy, right? I'd expect you guys would get after the rice production. Um, yeah, Vermont has so many farmers markets and so many small food producers. It's kind of a, a, a wonderland for that sort of thing. But, but Arkansas produces literally half of the rice America eats. Jokes aside, that's awesome. Definitely a legitimate retirement option. Um, yeah, apparently they, they grow rice. I, yeah. Like, and there's like advocacy groups. If you want to like grow rice on your fucking, Yeah. There's an annual Vermont Rice Conference. Apparently, the Vermont rice, like one of the rice farmers in Vermont, caught the attention of the Rice Council, uh, the, the Rice Laboratory at Cornell University and the National Science Foundation because of what they were doing. New England will never be able to compete with Arkansas and California in overall rice production, but the local VOR movement is driving people to learn about where their food comes from, and growing rice could be a productive choice for farmers who have the right kind of land. We can grow rice in the northeast of the U.S. We just need support of farmers, chefs, and consumers. So there you go. You co-produce rice and crawfish in the same place. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I bet that helps with the um, with some like uh, a pest problem too. I bet the 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 the, uh, the the crawfish eat some bullshit that would normally annoy the rice too. Uh, sticky rice or boring rice is Aka. I only eat brown rice or wild rice, which isn't rice. 
So, but I mean, I'd love to see some like rare varietals. Apparently this farm in Vermont that sells at the Brattleboro Farmer's Market, because of course they do, um, produces all sorts of good, crazy varieties of rice that you've never heard of or had the opportunity to eat because we only eat like two types of rice. So... <laughs> it does and you can use fish too in lieu of crayfish i'd love to prefer i prefer to dry uh dry farm uh, uh rice if at all possible unless you're in an area like louisiana where you can just flood a fucking bank it's not a big deal um Oh, yeah, hemp's fine. Uh, beast, yeah, you don't have to wet farm rice. It's only done out of convenience. It's only done out of convenience. Um, it's called dryland rice. Um, let's see. Yeah. And then the water seeding thing. You don't have to do that. Um, also it mobilizes a lot of arsenic in the topsoil. Uh, and that tends to be where you get your heavy arsenic, uh, load from. It's from the mobilization of the arsenic into the, from the topsoil into the water. Upland rice in your part of the world. Okay, we call it dryland rice here. Interesting. But yeah, yeah, it's totally a thing. You don't have to use water. Like, you don't have to flood the field to grow rice. It's not an, uh, it's not a varietal ne necessity. It's just uh, a growing convenience. Because you're not going to get. Uh, look, uh, Zabir, you got time to fucking convert most of the world's diet? Cool. Um, anyway, that's why. I mean, there's probably shit better than millet. And isn't millet... Yeah, I want to say, hold on. Yeah, the prolamins from barley, wheat, and rye have cross-reactionary activity with millet, autoimmunologically speaking. Um, If you have an autoimmune issue such as mine and like Cass in chat right now or Momo, um, uh, millet will flare your autoimmune issue. Yeah. Oh, apparently it's also prone to pests like say, aphids. Um, yeah. I can't be good for the fucking soil though. Uh, the water table. A uh, hundred million people currently. That's, I mean, yeah, fair enough. Uh, d I depend on upland rice. Um, Bangladesh, Cambodia, China, North America, Thailand, Nepal, Vietnam are important producers. Yeah, I mean, not everything fucking has access to, you know, that kind of. Um, Andy, that's why you got to get a guy. So you gotta get a guy. You know, if I'm gonna get a guy for that, I got a guy for that. I got a guy for everything. Welcome to the uh, uh, 21st century, where you have the internet and you have the ability to reach out and contact people. Go, go track people down who grow stuff. It takes a lot of work. It takes years. It takes years. Yeah. But at the end of the day, 
Uh, yeah, Jan Andy. Yeah, I got a guy for rice. I got a guy. I got a guy for everything. I got a guy for everything. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> it's fucking. There's a fungus that grows specifically on birch trees in the northeast of North America that has anti-inflammatory properties. That every fall a small uh, uh, a small growing season exists for. And you have to harvest very uh, very conversation. Uh, conservation uh, conversation conservationally mindedly um and so you go out and you harvest like one out of three of them and i've got a guy in canada that works just on the north uh i'm sorry on the new hampshire vermont border this is the prime area maine new ham maine new hampshire vermont and a little into canada quebec and so forth uh, is where this grows and super anti-inflammatory fun uh, fungus uh, fungi and it grows only on birch trees during a specific season and so i got a guy for that i got a guy for you know i i got a guy for everything for real like that's just what you have to do that's what you have to do if you want to even uh, if you start picking at if you pull at the thread that is ethical uh, ethical consumption that fucking entire sweater will come apart and it gets really weird really quickly. And all of a sudden you're like, well, fucking, all right. So the coconut sugar that I use, what's the farm like that that comes from? Can I find out the farm? Wait, I can't find out the farm. That means I need to change products and I need to be able to find a farm that I can contact and see, right? That's just one ingredient. That's just one ingredient. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. It's ridiculous. But I give it a good old college try. I do. Uh, but it takes a lot of fucking work. I'm not going to lie to you. Um. Oh, it's not a weekly shop. I don't do... That's... I, I fill in weeklies occasionally. But no, that... That's... That, that, that you... It's not a weekly shop. If you, if you work the way I do, like, you have to be ready to have a storage room for things. So you can go in deep. Because sometimes I have to order from... You know, in bulk. Yeah. I don't know any guys, but I wish I did. Uh, conservationally minded. Yeah. Uh, conversational. Uh, conservationally minded. It's the, the initial S. I want to be this heirloom seed guy. I do have heirloom seeds. Um, car accident. But do you, you have an heirloom seed collection? Like, is it a large one? Well, tell me about it. Car accident. See, this is the conversation that literally happens with with somebody. It's like, so you're like, you you want to be the heirloom seed guy? Like, what what do you have? Because I'm always my mom's a gardener. Fucking like, you know, what do you have? What do you have access to? What are your preservation methods? How do you store them? Do you have a library a library index of them? I'm starting. I have cilantro. Oh, let me know when you have something going. Car accident. Um. I can get irises from the homesteads from the 1700s. That's actually interesting to know. Uh, I have a storage unit. It only costs $50 a month. Uh, two tons bulk? No, not two tons bulk. I, I can't work in those numbers, uh, uh, Zubair. Um, they can't work in those numbers. I got to keep it like garage sized. Of course you do, Cass. Good to know. Mental note. Oh. <sighs> Limited stock available, of course. Yeah, Rev. If I ever want to do a little iris planting. Duly noted, Rev. Duly noted. What are we doing for bad movie night tonight? Uh, that's the wrong category. Um, Is, oh, it's opening. Jesus Christ. Uh, you're back with a donut. Good on you, Puka. All right. Uh, I think we've... Okay, no, we're not watching Zizix Road. Zizix Road is a fucking garbage. Yeah, this is... Uh, okay, yeah, we've watched... Uh, uh, I think we've watched all the good ones off this list, frankly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I'm aware of this list. Um, zombie Spanish Civil War would fun. It'd be fun. Is, is it literally just called Zombie Spanish Civil War? 
What's it called, cat? Um. Two thousand twenty? Yeah. Done. Uh which Dungeons and Dragons? We do a lot. Uh we haven't watched any of the D D movies though, so I mean the I think. We've done like a couple of knockoff spin-offs, exploitations. But we haven't done that. You're gonna have to get to actual titles. So, but no, I don't think so. Bulgarian treasure planet. Jesus Christ. Uh, with, with just Dungeons and Dragons? Is that just... I don't... What was the goddamn movie called? What's the actual name of the actual Dungeons and Dragons movie you want to, oh, you want in quotations so I know what the fuck you're talking about? Oh, uh, we could do an Evil Bong. I have uh, Ginger Dead Man versus Evil Bong. I just need to know what the fucking title is. Is it literally just Dungeons Ampersand Dragons? <laughs> We have both of them. There's so many bad Dungeons and Dragons movies at this point. Like, there's even an animated one or something. Okay. Okay, so it's Dungeons Ampersand Dragons. Got it. That's all I needed. Um, all right, movie. HD? 2000? 2000, right? Reopen that. What year did this shit out? Yeah, 2000. December 8th, 2000. Okay. Got it. Seven twenty. Seven twenty. Uh, to be honest, I'm only familiar with the first three Evil Bong movies. Never saw any crossovers. Fair enough. Um, this movie sucks. Um, I, it's not on our list, but I think I've seen it actually. Um. Okay. There we go. Only like Jeremy Irons and Brideshead. I don't have a particular. I need to know whether, hang on one second. I need to know more about this, what I'm looking at.
I don't see it, guy. Oh, wait, hang on. You search that specifically. Hold on a sec. I'm trying to verify something. Okay. It is. Okay. All right. This is kind of funny then. Okay. So... Sign printing guy posted this to Reddit. He knows this guy's buddy works at a sign printing company. And he said dozens were printed before they caught it. Who sees it? What's up, a resolution? And a resolution sees it. So, apparently, if you search for GOP elephant in quotes on Google Images, one of the uh, one of the media uh, elements that gets brought up is a uh, icon from a Mother Jones article in which they talk about. Oops, that's why I should stick to keyboard. Not now. The Republican Party is racist and soulless. Just ask this veteran GOP strategist. And that's where this image comes from. And you can even start, they've cleaned it up, but it's even got the same wear pattern in the tr uh, trunk. So they went online, they searched for a GOP elephant. One of the media, uh, el uh, media elements from a Mother Jones article got pushed via Google images to this, uh, to this candidate or whoever handled their, their image design. They slapped it on a fucking uh, uh, order form without, ch like, without seeing it, without noticing. And then cr the printer cranked out several dozen of these apparently before somebody actually noticed that there were clan hoods in the, in the icon. Probably not. Nah, probably not. Hey, Caboose is a failed graphic artist. I love this icon a lot. It is, uh, it's pretty fucking clean, isn't it, Caboose? It's good work. So, yeah, I just, I, that's what I was doing, is spending a couple of minutes verifying that you can, in fact, get this, this image and where it comes from and how it's getting pushed out when you search only with... Now you have to put in quotations and what they probably would have searched for. Now, but hiding in plain sight, kind of like real life. All right, let's do this, bitches. <clears throat> All right, let me see the download though. Oh shit! All right, Valley of the Dead's long done, and D and D's coming in fast. Hey, Jaded, thanks for the follow. Um. So, yeah, there you go. I just wanted to, wanted to just confirm that really quickly. It is hilarious. Oh, 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 uh, FYI. Local news, local news, local news. Uh, and that's amazing. Donald's signature. Um, local news. Las Vegas. Uh, no, Cass. Quite the opposite. Uh, in fact, despite our recent dalliance with water... It is official. We are the city of Las Vegas. We are 50 days. We are less. We are now under 50 days of clean water supply left. Yeah. It's it's slowly dwindling. We've only like if you cut it off, we've got 50 days, 49 days. We have officially declared an emergency. 
The Las... Uh, <laughs> thanks. Uh, the city of Las Vegas has officially declared this an emergency situation. Um, and are treating it as such. Yeah. We have one of the most... <sighs> well-monitored si uh, water systems in the world. Uh, we have one of the highest water reclamation rates in the world. We um, have more xeriscaping than any other place. Like, we are on the forefront of water conservation in Las Vegas. We truly are. Um, just need to get rid of those last few fucking golf courses. Um, they really don't take as much as people think they are. They're taking up more land than they are water at this point. Um, we, we've got them so on so such water reduced water cycles and stuff they really don't take as much water as pe people would normally think a little thunder there uh but they uh, they take up a lot of land and they take up a lot of resources that's that's the fucking problem with that um <clears throat> so yeah we were despite the flooding we uh we we are dealing with truly dire water shortages now uh but here I'll show you the, uh, um, who's going to have some of the good ones? Is this local? I think this is ABC seven. Is this us? Um, there we go. Dramatic video into our newsroom overnight showing the mess along the Las Vegas strip. No. Yeah, this is at the Circa Casino, one of the newest ones in Vegas. You can see water pouring through the monitor screens and ceilings. There were flooding issues also reported at Caesars Palace. And take a look at this video from late last night. You see several people being rescued from their cars, that water really deep there. Along with the rain, the National Weather Service says there were winds stronger than 70 miles per hour at times. Hello, I'm Mark Brown. Get Ah, oh, fun times in Las Vegas. All right, let me go see if it's raining. Uh, first, let me do this. All right, tobacco, everyone. Leave it open and see where we end up. What would be my recommendation to fix what problem? The wa the drinking water? Uh, yeah. Um, Revenge. Uh, Irrevenge. Uh, I'm just gonna call you IR, so you know that IR. Um, yeah. Um, here in Las Vegas, everything's legal. Um, I live in one of the most, you know, places. Gambling's legal here. Prostitution's legal here. Weed is legal here. Walking down the street with liquor is legal here. Shooting an automatic firearm is legal here. Um, you can get married at a drive-thru like a McDonald's. You can get divorced online. Um, yeah. You could get gay married uh, at a drive-thru. Um, drive down the street, uh, park by a casino, go drop 20 bucks into a machine, get a call girl, uh, fuck it, or a call, call guy, um, smoke a joint, fucking get divorced really quickly online so you can sleep with your call guy. Um, yeah. Welcome to Vegas. Yeah. Vegas was set up by gangsters. Um, n well, n no. Vegas was set up by the indigenous people because it's a natural... Res a, there's a springs reserve here. Um, is, there's, there's a spring here. 
um, right in downtown. Most people, uh, downtown Vegas is actually green. There's a spring there. The indigenous people set up a spring here as a waylay station. And then the Mormons set up a, uh, an outpost here because they learned from the indigenous groups out here that there's all oh, water. So the Mormons set up an outpost here. And when the trail, uh, when the train came through, they, they, uh, they need water for the train. So they put a train stop here. Um, so there's a train track that runs through the middle of Las Vegas because there's spring right there that they could get water from. Um, and then uh, eventually, fast forward a lot, Bugsy comes along and sets up the, the, uh, the flamingo. Um, that, that comes much later. Um, and then, yeah, Bugsy sets up the casino. Um, and um, then the, mul the real gangsters take over. Multinational corporations. Um, your favorite arcade on Fremont and Vegas closed during COVID. Oh, I'm sorry, Robo. That sucks. Uh, Vegas is dry Netherlands, but with guns. Um, yeah. Yeah, basically. Um, seriously, I've been through deeper water crossings in a... Dock ass Nissan. Good luck with a hundred thousand POS Jeep though. Uh, anyway, okay. So yeah, we're we're officially in. We're in a countdown here. We're in a countdown. Oh, Hawaii got its last. Um, how fast will I end up in jail if I start scre uh, streaming here in Russia and smoke weed on camera for three hours? Probably what? Probably quickly. Uh, now I just need the rain to go with it. Uh, come on, come on, rain. Probably. We could. There we go. Jesus Christ. We can find out. We'll see. Spooky Kai. Spooky Kai. Oh. That's D and D done. Done. Rev. <laughs> it's raining in Vegas and sweltering here in the Pacific Northwest, but global warming is not really all. Hold on, hold on, let's. You know what? We can hold on. and gentle just take it down a notch relax now tell ghost stories I don't know any good ghost stories Doorman. Yeah, I mean that I know that one caboose. That's the only one I know. That's literally the only one I know. It 
It's different, isn't it? Let's see. Where's my controls? No. First reign in Vegas in 49 years. <laughs> I don't right? Just poised. Yes, it would be. <clears throat> it would be. It would be a very bad night to be camping in a riverbed. <laughs> this Steiner dude taught me ghost stories about this thing called religion and the state and communism. Uh. it down a notch. Take it down a notch. Welcome, welcome to politics on a Friday. We've talked about war crimes. We've talked about human atrocities. We've talked about capitalism. We've talked about all the horrors. And now we decompress. have a glass of water. Ice cold water. Right? There we go. I changed the stream title to Decompressing from War Crimes Talk. <clears throat> I do love <laughs> uh, uh, I mean I are <sighs> let's put it to the chat 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 I ch I ask you I ask the hive mind if you were in in Irivaj IR's fucking position here, right? Caught by the police. You have to serve a year in the Russian military right now. Right now. Right? Russian military service conscript right now. Or two years in a Russian jail for not doing your military service right now. Which would you choose? Because I, I, I legitimately, my, my instincts is jail, but I, I mean, Jesus, you're probably not coming out of that either. Like, so just know that too. Like, yeah, that's a fucked up ultimatum, Rebo, right? What's the over under on surviving? I don't know, we'd have to ask Bobby. <laughs> It's, it's not good. It's not good. Could I serve and sabotage from the inside? Crimson has got the right, I think, the right spirit. Um, I think Crimson's, like, doing the right work. I, I think if anybody's got the, the, the correct anarchist take on this one, Crimson's probably the first one to put it out. Could I serve and sabotage from the inside? Yeah. If, if you're forced to serve in an unethical situation, an unethical war, and you are forced into that situation, I, I think the only ethical thing to do at that point is to serve with dishonor. It, to, to, and don't get caught. You don't want to get court-martialed and shot. The more damage you do over a long period of time, the better off it is. So, 
like I think the best ethical position one could assume is to say, okay, I'll serve. And then where you can do the most damage. Hey. Jesus. I are. I hope you're running through like uh, you better be running through a VPN. That's all I gotta say. If I, if you're real, if if you're if you're for real, then you, I hope you're running through a VPN. At the very least. At the very least. That's happening outside. There's a microphone at the door. Yeah, no, that's 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 all that's externality. Okay. knew a guy went to the hospital during Vietnam and the American military just forgot about him. Hey. Hey. The desert is gorgeous when it's functioning correctly, when humanity hasn't fucked it up. This place has an undeniable, raw beauty to it. It, it, it It's the kind of beauty that, like, oh, Sophia Loren, it just... Hedy Lamar, Hedy Lamar is, is, the, is the, the beauty of the desert. Hedy Lamar was cold and calculating and ruthless and would stab a motherfucker. And one of the sexiest people to have ever walked this planet. Right? She knew what she had. She knew what she was working with. She was brilliant to the nth degree. And she worked it. She's like, oh yes, I'm very attractive to you, aren't I? Hmm, I wonder what I could do with that. Oh, the desert is Hedy Lamar. Gorgeous, but we'll absolutely stab you. Hetty is my goddess. Hetty was a hell of a person. Hetty was a hell of a person. That's the name of Joe Rogan's dog, bro. Hetty. He named his dog Hetty. Fair. That's funny. That's funny. That's dude. He, that's a statement about his dog. That's not a statement about Hetty. That's a statement about his dog. That's yeah. Dude, that's, that's kind of funny. He, he likes that dog. Oof. Beautiful, challenging, but above all, dangerous. <clears throat> uh, yeah, that's, that's funny. Oh, God, I love that sound. Fuck. There we go. Wait, the stream title is officially ASMR decompressing from war crimes talk. <laughs> <clears throat> employment restrictions because I'm in hiding from army, but I already found a good job. Illegal employment. So you're essentially living like an illegal immigrant in your own country. IR. That's, 
I mean, that's fascinating. That's fascinating. I, I, I can't imagine it's easy. And I imagine it's a whole lot of stress. I have Puka, I have a very specific um mix. I have I have an app. I've had an app for ages, years now, years now. Um that lets me mix sound elements of like, you know, just the, the so I have a perfectly customized rain and thunder mix that uses like different styles of rain and different like elements like there's there's literally like fucking 12 different elements that comprise like the rain pattern for the mix right um and so like i have a, a customized loop of and it's it's almost it's in it's imperceptible that we're that it's a loop that it's it's being made like you know yeah it, it, it just rain heavy thunder but just rain in different elements and you can sort of hear in the distance like rain on some like structure but there's also rain on ground and rain on grass sounds different right and so yeah I, I that's my bag I really really the sound of rain is that, that thunder and rain is my I can sleep now I can sleep now yeah um, <clears throat> do you think central planning is possible in anarchist communities? I've worked this out already in my head. Yeah, no, whether I do. I do. I think it's it's entirely possible. Um, it's just there has to be a participatory process around it. That's all. You can 100% like do that um, and have tons of people agree to it. There may be some outliers who don't, and you may have to consider that within your, like, you know, your plan that like okay not everybody's going to want to go along with this but for certain things we have to get like consensus and other things we can just do like you know mostly this but if you don't want to participate hey you can do you know you can do your own thing in this way or something like that right like is this good you know that sort of thing but yeah there's there's definitely room because you have to have an element of it in any society there has to be some element of like the some group from the group has to be like okay We'll uh, we'll hang, we'll handle this. You know, we'll handle the plumbing, right? Like we can do the plumbing if you want us to like lay out the plumbing how it has to be for our like our commune to operate correctly. Like we're gonna have to have a plumbing system, right? Like we're gonna have to have you know that sort of thing. Then you know we all just sort of yeah. There's gonna have to be somebody who does that. Yeah, of course it can. You just have to temper it with particip participatory action and volunteer, uh, volunteer, um, voluntary um, interaction with it. Uh, rain has the structure of a trillion <laughs> Feigenbaum constants. Um, it has neural interlink, too. This car accident. Yeah, I wish it did. Dude, if I had that, I'd, fall. I'd never be here. Uh, God damn, the thunder is sexy. It is. Uh, desert rain tends to be varied and comes in waves. It's wonderful. Yeah, it, it, when it punches, it punches hard. When when desert rain dials up, it dials up. Yeah, I've I've. Um, oh, no worries, IR. No worries. You take care of yourself, really. Um, I don't remember what I asked you. Yeah. Drove to Phoenix once to buy my Nissan on the way. It started raining, so I slowed down. Within two hours of driving, I'd passed at least eight people who had passed me during the precipitation and were currently flipped on the side of their vehicles on I-40. Yeah. Yeah, dude, it's no joke. Um, am I camping? No. Yeah. Mm. How can I do this best? There we go. That's what's happening outside. I have a courtyard out front. There's like, my house is kind of like shaped like this. Sort of like this, actually. So there's a courtyard right here. Um, and that's another microphone on, this, on the loop, just by the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jibby, uh, <laughs> in the loosest of senses. In the loosest of senses. Yes. So, sort of, shall we say. Sort of. <laughs> um.
talk camping in the rain, talking politics, and smoking weed is down my bucket list of things I want to do. Wither, if you can arrange to do it with a um, refugee from, uh, if you can, uh, if you ma- if you manage to do it with two Iraqi refugees, one of whom literally snuck out of the country with guitar on his back under gunfire and another one who won the literal lottery to come here a colombian <coughs> kid who at 18 decided to come to america and just camp walmart and camp his way across america to see it all and a german uh student who she, uh, she was visit she had just graduated college and was touring the country letting it all off and finally enjoying this uh, enjoying being here she had been here and done uh, veterinary school here actually um, so me, a fucking anarchist uh, IT geek with whatever the fuck I bring to the table, two Iraqi uh, refugees, a Columbia, just a curious Colombian kid, and a German veterinary student all sat in Zion, camped, did all that, and fucking had a good time. Fucking, so if you can get it done, yes, get it done with her. It's worth doing. <clears throat> If you changed your stream title to Camping and Thunderstorm, that'd be such a funny troll. I put a question mark. I put a question mark. Camping and Thunderstorm? I mean, houses are just kind of like perma camps. Uh, oh, I'm not a fan of artichoke crimson. I'm not a fan of artichoke. I gotta tell you, it doesn't look bad. I just, I just don't like artichoke. I just don't see the point of it. Oh, okay, that's nice. So, why don't we, we've got the movies picked out, why don't we just take over to, um, what is, what is, what is, yeah, why not, oh wait, I don't, I just want to see this, oh, okay, cool, let's do that, right, I'm going to read over to Squiddy. Um, and we're going to go over to Discord and we're going to start the starting process for starting Bad Movie Night. That's it. We'll, we'll, we'll start the start, you know, to get Bad Movie Night underway. Um, for those of you who want to join us, exclamation Discord, if you're not already on the Discord server. And, uh, you can join us for bad movie night we do it every friday and we uh we watch movies that are subpar and we get (coughs) inebriated usually very heavily and we enjoy ourselves after a week of shit and dealing with tankies and capitalists and all you other fucks i are i've it's your dude. I hope you followed. You did follow. Uh, I want you. Yeah, I, I stay safe, my man. Really interesting meeting you. Good luck. Keep your head down. Come by another time. I look forward to future conversations. Hopefully, when you're a freer person. Everyone else, we're just gonna read over to Squiddy. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.